hello and welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd put a, together a little uh, video on a chin mount that I picked up off of Amazon. I don't remember the manufacturer name. I don't know if it really had one um, or who I, the seller was, but I'll add a link to it below in the description. But I really liked this chin mount. It was super easy to set up, super easy to use, and it worked well. Um, I did a ride to the uh, plane crash south of the Crow's Nest Pass. And I used my Hero 9 most of the time on that. And with my Hero 9, I was running 4K, 30 frames a second. And everything turned on, all the stabilization, the horizon leveling, all that. And it, it came out good, I think. It was really good. If you're interested in the footage of that, uh, captured the video is CNP Crow's Nest Pass uh, plane crash ride 2021 I think is what I labeled it it's on my channel check it out um, but the footage turned out great and I don't use an external mic especially with my GoPros because what's the point of having a waterproof sports camera if you have the waterproof door off to have it connected up so what I was really surprised with, and that, was, that ride was the first time I used this chin mount, was that it picked up my voice while I'm talking my way through that uh, entire ride without issue. It had absolutely no problems because it's right here. It's right in front of your mouth, sitting right here. This is my Hero 7 right now, but I had the 9 on. At the end of that ride, at the end of that plane crash ride, I actually uh, ran out of batteries for my Hero 9 and I switched over to the 7. And I think that footage turned out just as well. Like, all from, there's a point where I do change out the camera on it. And it's, uh, the, I don't know, probably 30, three quarters of the way through the video, somewhere in there. And then all the way back to the staging area, while I'm sitting at the staging area, that's all done with the 7. Uh, everything from the start up to that three quarter-ish time frame in that video was done with the Hero 9. But it sits right, in, right on your chin guard, or mouth guard, whatever you want to call this part of your motorbike helmet. Um, it picks up voice really well. I was talking, not overly loud i don't think just you know trying to talk over top of the noise of my bike to begin with but that was it i wasn't yelling i wasn't screaming nothing like that so the audio picked up really well um and it with this gopro stabilization anyways and doesn't even have to be the better stabilization of the nine because it seemed really nice and stable with the seven as well i didn't try it with the five um it's the only other gopro i got uh so I don't know how the, that, that was what, like first gen stabilization still with GoPro, I think. Um, I don't know how well it would be with that. But with the 7 and the 9 that we're filming on right now, uh, it, was, it was great. It held it nice. Like it's, you know, it's not super sturdy, but the stabilization handles everything that that thing shakes. And it's easy to mount. It's literally two straps that wrap around inside the helmet to the other end of the straps. And they got these little cam buckles that you just, you pull the strap tight, cam over the lock, lock or cam over the lock. And that's it. Now, I think it works well, at least with my helmet, because my helmet has the peak, kind of like a nose guard, I guess, area right in the front hopefully you can see that there um that's very common with a lot of motocross style helmets they have that some street bike helmets don't they tend to be a little more smooth going through this section uh i'm guessing mostly for uh windscreens or visors whatever you want to call them windscreens uh to seal up really nice and so that they don't have to come up with some strange you know or complex cut into their windscreen but on a motocross helmet, I think it works really well. And I think the reason why that is, is because you can pull the straps around on the narrower parts of either side of this raised nose guard area. And so that helps it actually be more stable and prevents it from moving around the chin guard. It can't slide left, it can't slide right. It has to stay there. 
So any play that's in there is simply just the, the mount itself having a bit of play. Let me get my camera out of the way here. And uh, you'll see here. So there's, get rid of that camera. So this part here moves a bit. And, but like I said, with the advanced stabilization anyways, you don't see it in the video. At least I don't think so. It, it seems really good. And these are more pliable. They're not, they're not really a rubber, but they're not a solid plastic. So it seems like, you know, that they would take a little bit of a hit before actually breaking, which is nice. I like that as well. It's got a really nice rubber backing that uh, goes against your helmet so it's not going to cause damage it is a little dirty so maybe if i clean that up it would uh, stick a little tighter um, and then it's got this really nice j mount on here and so what that allows you to do is instead of having just your gopro straight up and down which if you're wearing a the helmet your chin piece always sits lower and the helmet actually will sit on an angle on your head going up and then coming down your chin so if you were to just put the camera straight up on that mount you're going to get lots of great footage of your handlebars stuff right in front of you um, you're not going to get any footage out in a distance so with that j mount it allows you to actually tilt the camera back some and I actually found with my cameras, I actually have to tilt it as far back as it'll go. Once it's in, push it as far back and the bolt is in place. Push it as far back as it can go and it seems to be perfect. I get, uh, I get really nice line of sight out to a distance and you still see my handlebars just a little bit. Uh, and my front racks. Really nice. Now this is how it works. Is in here. This is where those cam buckles are, right in here. You can just pop those open. Actually, this is a little sloppy right now, so that could be why I'm getting a little more movement in there too. But you just pop these little cam buckles over and pull the straps out. Right through. So this is the mount. Nice close up of it, just like that. Nice rubber backing on here. Uh, this is plasticky, plastic. Um, holding, that's your actual mount holding the, and then it kind of holds the rubber in place right there. Um, so yeah, nice, nice rubber mount. Let's get rid of this helmet for a second here. And so the way it works is it has these buckles. Feed the the uh, other end through there through from the back side feed it through up through the front pull it tight and then just snap that over top of it hopefully I didn't don't know if that was actually in frame there so pull your strap through the back out to the front and then once you got it on your helmet you just pull that strap super tight as tight as you can and then you just cam this over right here just slap that down shut so right like this slap that down shut over top of it and it locks it in place and I had no problems with it coming loose at all um, let me get this out of here so I will actually feed this through bear with me for a half a second here Do, 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 do. It's a little bit of a pain to feed that through the first time because they do have it uh, folded over. So on this side it is folded over, looks like one, twice, so you got about three layers of the fabric. And so you got to fit that through that little cam buckle. But uh, once you get it through there, that actually helps because then it holds it from, 
easily pulling back through. So this is it here. So now I got it pulled through. I got, uh, you know, and you pull it tight on your helmet, buckle that over, and it's tight. It's, you know, it's not coming loose. Like I'm pulling on it pretty hard at that point right there. And that has not come loose. It's nice and tight. It's slim inside the helmet. I don't even know it's there. Um, and as far as the, even the weight of the GoPro on the helmet, I don't know it's there. Most of the time I actually forgot the GoPro was there with the exception that I was trying to talk to the camera to provide a good video. Um, it worked really well. I was a little concerned that maybe it would pull hard, pull down the weight of the camera, pull down on my helmet and would kind of, you know, be noticeable. And yeah, I, I didn't notice it. I didn't care that it was there. Nothing. It actually worked really nice. I do recommend it. It is a good, it, it is a good mount. I'll have a link for it in the description below. It'll be an Amazon affiliate link. Um, so if you do purchase through that, I will get a little bit of a kickback. Help me buy and try out more products like that. But it worked good. I really enjoyed that helm, that uh, mount. And like, even though my helmet's got a indent here, um, so it doesn't have anything really to sit tight flush against right here, it still worked. It worked really well thank you for watching uh if you like the product check it out if you like my videos do all the normal youtube stuff and uh thank you for watching have a great day